G'day guys, in this episode I take a question around what is my response when somebody asks me what do I do? My answer to this is counterintuitive and almost encouraging you to start being more understated than overstated. And I'm trying to shape history Put on from the sky for some strength to take with me Line up the stars, uh, fly away quickly And push the world forward like a tidal wave hit me I ride the wave swiftly I fear no man, check my titles mate quickly Came from the sky with the light of day in me And grew my own wings G'day guys, welcome to episode 185 of Ask Jack D Happy Monday out there to everybody Hope you guys got a chance to pause over the weekend and just breathe. I think so much of our effectiveness as entrepreneurs comes from our ability and willingness to stop, pause, disconnect. And it's often in the disconnection and the pauses, if we do them properly, we we're able to rejuvenate and realign with where we're going. I hope you got a chance to do that over the weekend. If you didn't, try and schedule, even if it's 20 minutes over two days, 20 minutes, schedule it for this weekend. Pauses are important. Rosie's so happy she's got her microphone. She comes into this set every day just smiling from ear to ear, looking like an absolute rock star. <laughs> Rosie, how you doing? I'm great today. How was your weekend? It was really fun. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It was my friend's birthday, so I did Love some that. karaoke. Karaoke? Yeah. There's an interesting one. I know. Are you good at karaoke? Mm, pretty good. Do you karaoke in an English accent? Um, depends what song I'm doing. I didn't on the weekend. Rosie naturally, naturally defaults to an English accent at times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Karaoke is not something you want to see me do. What's your karaoke song? There is none. Really? Mm-hmm. Why not? Uh, I'm trying to think of what listening to me sing karaoke would be. It just would be Justin nice. Bieber? You sing a lot of Bieber. <laughs> You do. <laughs> you sing. You're using the word sing very loosely. <laughs> That's classified as singing. Okay, let's get into the show. Okay. Today's question comes from Ben Lynch from Facebook. He asked it ben Lynch. on the I live show that last week. Ben's yeah, a lot, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Thanks for the question, Benny. Okay, so he says, Jack, how do you describe who you are? Or what you do at a dinner part, dinner or party for someone that doesn't know you? What's your pitch? Yeah, I saw mm-hmm. this question. Yeah. Did I tag you in this question? Yeah, you did. Said, yeah, yeah. Really good question, Benny. And and the reason I flagged it is uh, I've wanted to have this conversation for a little while and never, uh, you know, sort of it's never sort of come to mind as we've been filming. And then I read your question, Ben, and and thought that's just a really good question because I think it highlights something important. Now I'm going to present, shock horror, a counterintuitive view to this question, right? A lot of you will disagree with me and that's fine. Everybody has their own approach in terms of, well, everything, but particularly my response to this question. So in my experience, when speaking to high level entrepreneurs, truly successful human beings, When you ask them what they do, they answer in a very understated manner, right? Like if you watch an interview with Jerry Harvey, for instance, he's an Australian billionaire. He is one of the most prolific Australian investors you'll ever see. He owns like hundreds of racehorses, like that he sort of buys and invests in and, you know, has fun doing that. And he's got a property portfolio, I, I'm not sure, it'd probably be worth, I don't know, maybe 500 mil, thereabouts, you know, a couple of years ago, it was 600 mil. Um, and someone says to Jerry, what do you do? He says, oh, I dabble in business, I've got a couple of horses and I've got a bit of property, right? That's his answer to that question. If someone asks Warren Buffett what he does, he says, I love learning about investing, right? I think the needle has shifted too far towards someone asks you what you do, early stage entrepreneur goes into pitch mode and often trying to almost overstate what it is they do. Now, I know what you're thinking. Everyone's like, well, if I'm still early stage, I need to sort of, I need to do myself justice. I need to talk my, you know, talk my way into the game. And there is an element of truth to that. However, what I would suggest is that you find a way to do that elegantly. You sort of wait for an opportunity or wait for someone to ask you more about what it is you do, rather than coming out of the gates and sort of trying to paint an overinflated picture. 
for people of experience, when somebody sort of goes into pitch mode straight away, uh, anybody sophisticated kind of sits there and goes, okay, they're still trying to get the runs on the board. If you can be more centered in yourself, if your response can represent a greater level of self-assurance rather than the need to sell yourself to a too great a degree, particularly amongst experienced and sophisticated people, you will gain a higher level of respect and most importantly, a higher level of trust up front. So yes, you should probably have an understanding in terms of what you say when people say, what do you do? Um, however, just answer the question in a way where if this person is relevant to the space that you're in, um, they it sort of piques their interest and then you can have this sort of natural organic conversation rather than jumping on the front foot and overselling, which I see so many early stage entrepreneurs doing today. When somebody says to me, Jack, what do you do? What do you do? I say, I'm in education and investments. That's my response to that question. And if they're interested in education or if they're interested in investments, then they'll go, oh, great, you know, I'm ex Macquarie. What do you do by way of investment? And then I'll go, well, I run a company called The Entourage. Where, you know, we educate entrepreneurs. We've also got The Entourage Growth Fund, which is a small fund. It's a small fund, not a big fund. It's a small fund we've set up, set up to invest in Australian upstarts to give the generation of, you know, the next generation of entrepreneurs the resources, both capital and non, you know, non-financial that they need to succeed. So it's an understated conversation, but if your response resonates with the person you're speaking to, it will give rise to an authentic conversation. So my advice to all of you, when asked what do you do, be very precise, be very um, clear in what you do, if you've just done something great, sure, talk about it. Like if you're gen genuinely excited, like if we've just won an award or something, I'll go, you know, like I'm, you might see that I'm smiling right now. We were just listed as the fourth best place to work in Australia. That's something that's really important to me because I just love my people and I love our culture. Uh, so that was a really good one to get. You know, I'm not saying don't talk about your wins. I'm not saying don't be proud of what you're doing. I'm just saying that often it's the understated response that garners the greatest level of trust. Something to think about. I hope that was useful for all of you out there. Rosie, what question can we ask them today? What's your pitch? What's your pitch? And it might be different to what it was prior to watching this episode. If you were to make it, if you were to pull it back just 10 or 15 degrees, what is your pitch? Now, having heard me say that, and seriously, go and research anyone, researcher, Branson, researcher, any, not even names of that big, but research entrepreneurs that have uh, you know, gone a long way and gauged their response for how they answered that question. Refine how you answer yours in the comments below. How do you work your pitch? If I was to ask you right now, what do you do? Hit us with your response in the comments below. <laughs>